Hi, I'm Tim. In today's video, we'll go over E-Flight's Timber Almost Ready to Fly RC model airplane. Let's get to it. Let's take a moment to go over the uh, Timber. It's an almost ready to fly airplane. It comes uh, to you in a very large box. We'll take a look at it now. What will happen? There'll be two wing halves. The fin and rudder is installed. You install the stabilizers. You install the landing gear. Everything else is built in. The motor, the electronic speed control, the servos, the flap servos, the aileron servos. All you do is assemble it, charge up the battery, and go. My timber on. weighs 3.9 pounds with the battery I'm using. The wingspan is 47 and a half inches and the length is 41.5 inches. So it's a nice size airplane, good weight for flying in a little bit windy conditions, J just the right size for an everyday flyer at the RC the field. It's made from extremely durable foam. Um, it's just very tough. I've been flying this for a long period of time. There's yet to be any sort of uh, hangar damage or rash. It's a very strong foam. We'll cover in a little bit the um, unique paint scheme, co covering scheme that I did with this airplane. But overall, a very solid uh, design. Timber is an almost ready to fly airplane. You just put together a few components uh, from the box. We'll just take a moment now to go through the manual. The manual comes with the airplane. There is an available uh, online version at the Horizon Hobby website. We'll look at that in a second. And just some standard things here, the contents. This is what comes in the box, the two wing halves, the landing gear, uh, the uh, horizontal stabilizer, the fuselage, servos, all the electronics are put in, settings for the dual rates. There's two types you can get, the bind and fly basic, the plug and play, the only difference between the bind and fly basic and the pl plug and play is the receiver. With the bind and fly, the receiver is installed. You literally bind it and fly. I got the plug and play, so I use my own receiver. The batteries, um, charger, and transmitter required to complete the airplane, so no, no big surprise there. And just some general things about computerized um, setup. This is what I mentioned, and I'll, when we take a tour of the fuselage as a landing gear. Notice that you screw on the landing gear. For an airplane this size, there's just this plastic with two screws that hold everything in place. That's just not strong enough for an airplane of this size. That is literally my only critique of the Timber model, just the landing gear. Don't pry it too hard or you'll have a problem. The tail surface is just um, screwed in place, a optional slat, which I did not do, and then receiver with the six plugs. And that's really all there is to it. There's some binding instructions, battery arming, uh, good background information. But after that, you're ready so to My fly. timber has a unique color scheme with the uh, yellow and orange. I use Coverite heat shrink material to do that. Let's take a look at what the timber looks like coming out of the box. It's a basic white foam with some press-on vinyl uh, decals. The decals look great. They are on there fine. But what I decided to do is um, take off those vinyl decals and put on the iron-on covering. But let's take a look at what it looks, what the plane looks like coming out of the box. This is the timber as it comes out of the box. It's a white foam airplane with the stick-on green and black vinyl stickers. You peel those off with a sharp X-Acto blade, get down to the white foam, and just cover it with the um, cover right iron-on covering. Just take it a patch at a time with the curves, it works fine. The graphics are from eBay. So what I decided to do was use um, Coverite heat shrink covering to put a different color scheme in my model. Uh, here's what my timber looks like, yellow wing, red fuselage. And Coverite is just a standard um, heat shrink iron-on covering. I bought mine on Amazon. The foam is tough enough that you can use a iron. I used about 250 degrees to apply my heat shrink covering with a heat gun. There was no damage or bubbling or anything of the foam of the aircraft structure. The Coverite material adhered extremely well. There's nothing that's been come up off of that. If we take another look at the airplane, you notice that I used the color here, but I kept portions of the white foam as a trim. I kept the black glare shield on front and uh, same going around the airplane, left the landing gear white. You'll notice also the Piper Cub lightning flash and the numbers. Those are just press-on decals that I purchased on. The thing I want to point out, when I covered my airplane with the iron-on cover right, I think it looks great. It's a very attractive scheme, differentiates it from the other timbers at the field. But the um, E-Flight is always updating a version of the timber with different sizes, etc. And the one that is uh, popular now is a night flying version where there's very bright LED lights inside the aircraft that shine through the uh, foam structure of the airplane. 
It's a great idea. It's a great way to fly at night to actually see the airplane. Keep in mind, if you do like to fly at night and you cover your airplane with a cover right, that's probably going to cover up the lighting. Again, something to consider if you decide to go you that buy route. the timber at your local hobby stop or what I did is I went to the Horizon Hobby website. Let's take a quick look at the Horizon Hobby website and see uh, what version of the timber they're offering now. This is the Horizon Hobby website. It's very nice redesign, airplanes, cars, trucks, helicopters, etc. So we'll go ahead and search and type in the timber. And it comes up with a night timber, 1.2 meter. Note that there is an internal light to this airplane, which is great for night flying. Some pictures of the airplane, uh, just to get an, let you have an idea of what you're going to get. Very helpful when buying, and a nice little uh, options to complete the airplane, all part of the Horizon Hobby website design. Another view of the landing gear, you see there's just a couple screws holding it on. Wish it was a little bit tighter. Note also the manual we discussed is on under product details and there is an electronic PDF copy of the manual. So now I'm going to take a moment and I'm going to take the battery, put it on the airplane. We'll watch how the controls work, dual rates and flaps. Okay, we installed the battery. There's a very nice little hatch that just uh, fits right into place. We put that on the bottom. And now the airplane is powered up. Now you'll notice initially there are lights in the front, there's lights uh, on the tail as well as the wingtips. Those come with the airplane, they're all built in, and I think they're a very nice little safety feature because that tells everybody that there is power on the airplane. I have my transmitter turned on, and just let me turn the model around. And we can see that the um, elevator, rudder, ailerons, and notice the flaps on the wings. Lots of flaps, so they work just fine. I'll give an example of the dual rates. The elevator, this is low rate. High rate, it goes up like that. So again, the instructions are good about how to um, install that with the, with the rates. It is a 3D airplane, so just make sure you're on the low rates for your initial. Let's take off the wing and take a look inside take the, off the wing bolts, and I just want to show you the six connector wires uh, on the wing. These are the wires. I recommend labeling them. You can see I have flap right, flap left, etc. There are six wires that go in, one wire for each side of the flaps, the aileron servos, as well as the lights. And those just plug in. You have to do that every time before. As I mentioned the foam is just very tough, solid foam. The engine is uh, mounted in there. It, it doesn't wiggle or move an inch. The ESC, as a matter of fact, because it's all solid, I don't even know what the engine and ESC look like. It's all properly buried into the front of the airplane. And you notice as you look inside the fuselage, these are the, uh, uh, excuse me, the elevator and rudder servos. Very professionally put into place with the keepers, the control arms. Everything just works out fine. Then the battery hatch is underneath here. So plenty of room in the fuselage for about anything and just a good design airplane, except for the landing gear. As I mentioned uh, early on, this is the landing gear. You have four screws, two at each side, holding on this plastic landing gear. The springs are there, they certainly help, but these are not designed to flex really because they're plastic. You can see I've put some epoxy and reinforcing wire on here. It's just a, the way the plane is designed, there should be a much stronger landing gear. Just be careful on your landings. It can't take too much. Even though this is an almost ready to fly airplane, you can still do modifications and changes to the almost ready to fly. One thing I want to point out quickly, because it's such an important and easy to use safety device, is Dave's RC Safe Start. And there'll be a um, web link to Dave's website um, below. It's just a little circuit board with a push button. You uh, install this in a hole in the airplane. This just is mounted anywhere in the airplane. No soldering at all required. This plugs into the receiver. This end um, goes into your electronic speed control. And let me show you what the safe start does. In this case, the plane is powered up just like in the field. You can see the lights on. This is the safe start button here, which is the same button right here just a little hole, then you glue it onto the inside. When you first power it on, this is a red light. That means there's power on the system and the controls will work. If you look at the 
elevator and rudder, but you advance the throttle and because it's red, the motor does not turn. That is a safety feature. As you go out to the flight line, you put it on the runway, you're going to taxi out, you hold this down for three seconds. The light turns green, which means the electric motor is armed and ready to go. The controls still work, but when we advance the throttle, you can see the engine turns around, and that's a big engine. When you're done flying, you simply push that, it's red, you move the throttle, nothing happens, the controls work. It's a great, inexpensive, easy to use safety feature. It could save you an injury someday. In conclusion, you can see from the videos that the airplane flies well. It, it's a solid airplane on the ground with taxiing, good uh, tailwheel steering. There's plenty of power. Uh, please make sure you're in low control rates for the, those initial flights and takeoffs. It takes off, it turns, a very predictable, solid airplane. I like mine a lot. I rec recommend it to anybody else who just wants a good, everyday, fun-flying model airplane that's capable of extreme aerobatics if you want to go that route.